Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, this is Redberry Wheel here, and welcome back to my normal videos. Now, there has been a lot of requests for Civil Air Patrol content, so the next few videos will be both Let's Plays and Civil Air Patrol, like, content-related stuff, whether it be wearing uniforms, uh, aerospace dimensions, or learn-to-lead stuff. I will be covering a bunch of that stuff over this next week. In addition to that, I will be doing my Let's Plays, so I'll, I'll sprinkle a little bit of cap between the normal Let's Plays because I like doing both, and I think that's a good balance between my two target audiences, which is Civil Air Patrol people who are looking at my videos and being like, hey, you're helping with my tests, and I'm, I'm super glad I, I can help with your tests. And then also, like, Let's Play people who are like, I want to just sit down and enjoy playing a game with Redberry Wheel. So we'll be going over a few different things for both of those so everyone can be happy and I enjoy making content for both I like balancing both so we're gonna be doing that over the next few days okay so this video I wanted to talk a little bit about grooming standards for Civil Air Patrol and what like your hair requirements are and even show you guys how I do my hair in order to show off how I turn these luscious locks of hair into a really tight nicely formed bun Okay, so let's just jump into it. So all of the regulations that you need to know for wearing a uniform or what you should look like while you're wearing a uniform is in CAP Regulation 39-1, also known as CAP R39-1. And in this video today, I will be talking about grooming standards. And grooming standards means how you keep your hair and any like facial hair that you may have if you're, you're a dude who has facial hair, okay? So the stuff that is talking about the grooming standards is in chapter three of the delightful 39-1, which I will link down below if you have any questions about how to wear a uniform or grooming standards and that the associated information, please feel free to leave a comment down below. If you do enjoy content like this, I ask that you leave a like or subscribe, ring that notification bell. I know a lot of YouTubers ask people to do that. But if you do that, then the YouTube algorithm actually recommends content more to people in general. So by you doing that, like simple little action of like in the video, it will help me and it will enable the channel to grow even more and reach a wider audience because this video might be helpful for anyone. So let's, let's get into <laughs> grooming standards. Okay, so something that the grooming standards really dive into is that it needs to look professional and it needs to look natural. For example, if you have pink in your hair or like neon green in your hair, like Billie Eilish over here, that's not actually allowed in regulations. The Air Force doesn't allow you to have such colors in your hair and neither does Civil Air Patrol because the uniform is based off of the United States Air Force. So in order to provide the same respect to the uniform as a wearer, you can't have your hair dyed an unnatural color. That does not mean you can't have your hair dyed at all. I know some people have brown hair that have dyed their hair blonde or a blonde hair that have dyed it black and that's perfectly fine as long as it looks like a natural color and you don't have a huge difference between the different colors. So it, like if your roots start to change color and it's very very different they don't like that as much but if you can like lighten it up or like have it be a similar shade to what you have like natural highlights are fine, so if you had like a little bit more highlights, as long as it's not too different from what your hair looks like, then that is okay. Your haircut, if you're a male or female, has to allow you to wear your headgear. And what that means is if you are wearing a cap, let's say, I'm, I'm not gonna put my cover on right now, but if you're wearing it, your hair has to allow you to put it on. So if your hair is super duper long on top and it's like woof, a giant fluff ball on the top of your head, you're not going to be able to put this on and have it rest on your head the way that it's required to and having it like <laughs> proper wearing of the cover, which I will go over in a different video. But you want to make sure that you can still properly wear it while you have your hair cut. Okay, so in terms of male hair, I'm not as familiar with these standards, but I am familiar with them. You're not allowed to let your hair grow in an excess of one inch and a quarter. So I've got my trusty ruler right here. It's one inch and a quarter. So it can't be longer than this amount. If you're not sure if your hair is within regulation standards, then you could probably just have someone measure your hair with the ruler. It's not the easiest thing, but it's something that you could do. 
but you can't have it be longer than that or else it's out of regulations and sometimes you guys have like the justin bieber mop that's like going across their face Mm -mm. That, that is a little bit too long for cap standards it talks about natural termination point of your hair which is like talking about the back of your hair and it can only be a maximum length of a quarter of an inch and they don't want it to really be touching the back of your neck where where the collar touches so like with this you wouldn't you'd be asked to shave the hair here and try to like make it a quarter of an inch like before that you're not allowed to have a mohawk a mullet uh, the, the cornrows or anything like that it, it needs to be just like oh natural Additionally, it talks about needing a tapered appearance. If you understand what a tapered appearance is, it's basically like it it can be at a shorter length here and then it gets longer as you go to the top. It's a traditional military haircut, so if you think of like a stereotypical military guy, what the haircut looks like, it's basically just that. It's, it's nothing huge or different. It's just more of a professional shorter cut and it's, it's more to look professional in uniform and standardized. So you can have a mustache in uniform if you would like, but it can't pass the outer edges of your lower lip. So if you have a mustache, it needs to be well kept, like trimmed regularly. It can't be out of control or anything like that. And it can't go past there or else it's out of regulations. In addition to that, in terms of like facial hair, you can't have a beard in any US Air Force style uniform. Now, if you're a senior member and you're wearing corporate polo, you can have that nice, full of beard on your face. And if you're wearing the blue BDUs, you can also have a beard for that. But if you're in like a flight suit, the US Air Force Blues or the ABUs, you cannot have a beard in those. If you are a female, you are allowed to have short hair. It can't be longer than three, and a half inches if you are doing shorter hairstyle. You are allowed to have braids or locks or anything like that, but it needs to come into one single bun. So I'm gonna show you guys how I do my hair right now and we'll see how this goes because I've never actually done like a how-to video before. But here we go. Here are the materials you need. You need at least two hair ties. I typically use three, a hair net, a few bobby pins, maybe three or four depending on how bushy and varying lengths of your hair is, at least two or three hair clips, and a sock or some kind of donut that you can use to hold shape in your hair. Okay, so whenever you are doing something with your hair, the implements that you are putting in your hair, like hair ties, hair bands, anything like that, they need to be the same color as your hair. If you do not have <laughs> A, a color that is the exact same, like maybe a lighter shade or a slightly darker shade is okay. But if you're wearing a blonde hair tie or a hot pink hair tie when your hair is black, that doesn't quite meet the standards for grooming. So I, I, I have three hair ties right here. I have two tighter ones that are less used. And then I have one larger one for when I put my hair into a bun in general. So... In terms of the implements that I use, I use two different hair brushes. I use one to get the knots out of my hair because it's a wider, wider uh, comb. And then this one is like a horse hair brush. It's, it's actually plastic bristles, pra plastic bristles, but it, it pulls the hair tighter so that it can get into a better form. So I'm gonna brush my hair first and then I'm gonna go ahead and put it into a ponytail. Ready? Okay, so something that I do to help make my ponytail a little bit tighter is I use two different hair ties. I do one hair tie and then I do another hair tie closer to my head. I know it's a little hard to see, but I have two here and that also gives a better foundation for my donut. So this, this is a donut or it's something that you can put into your hair. And what you do is if you have your nice ponytail right here, you put the donut on top just like that. And now you have the donut on your hair. So after that, you're going to flatten your hair against your head, kind of like what I'm doing. I normally lean over and do it. And then you're gonna wrap that extra hair tight. Normally it's better if it's stretched out over the top of it and try to equally distribute the hair across the top of the donut, just like that. Oh, 
Okay, so now we've done that step. And next I use my hairnet. So I buy my hairnets typically from Walmart because I like the, the mesh from them. And they typically come in packs of three. So you can get packs of three. You can also get them at Dollar Tree depending on what the stock is at Dollar Tree at the time. But I take the hairnet and I wrap it around all of that excess hair. And then I put a nice bobby pin in it. So I have the bun is on the inside of one corner of the hairnet. And then I twist and then bring it over again. Twist and bring it over. Twist and bring it over. If it doesn't cover the bun all the way after twisting, you can always just wrap it around the base kind of like this and then bobby pin it in using one of the bobby pins that you have. So I have a bobby pin right here. Okay, and so that completes my bun. Now there's a, a bunch of flyaways you can see here. I, I have little baby hairs that show up sometimes. So something that I like to use to help keep my hair down is using hairspray. Um, I typically do it after I have finished the bun itself so that it's nice tight and kept together and then I spray a little bit. Sure, I'll, I'll spray a little bit. Ugh. Ugh. But don't, don't do too much and don't do it too close to your face. And then wipe back and I use, whoop, I use hair clips to pull it back to make it smoother and so I, I follow the flow of my hair. And I clip it back like that. So that completes my little hair tutorial in the nice grooming standards portion of this video. <laughs> now, if you want to have little braids or things like that in the back of your hair, that's great. You can go for that. But I like to follow like the simple bun. I learned it like <laughs> 10 years ago for encampment. So it's something that I have found to be really useful and I hope you guys found it useful as well, if, if you have longer hair like me. Okay, so I'm gonna talk about makeup a little bit. Unfortunately, males are not allowed to wear makeup in accordance to US Air Force regulations and cap uniform regulations. Females are allowed to wear it, but it is defined as conservative makeup. So wearing like hot pinks and purples and the new most recent Jeffree Star cosmetics, like no, 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 no. If you have like some nice browns and like, uh, like natural colors, that's fine. But like doing really flashy neon colors doesn't really fit with the natural look that the US, US Air Force or Civil Air Patrol are going for in uniform. So you can't wear those. There is a section in 39-1 that does talk about tattoos, but I'm not going to go into that today because most people don't really have tattoos that are younger in like the kid age range and that's normally who's watching these videos. So if you do want more information, just go ahead and check out 39-1 where the link is down in the description. In terms of piercings, only women are allowed to have any piercings and only on the ears. You're allowed to have one piercing just like what the Air Force has in terms of standards and they, they can't be super duper large or like giant hoops or giant holes. It has to be a very small kind of like ornament on your ear that can just like sit there like maybe a little fake pearl or a tiny diamond you can have. But it, it can't be anything that's really like giant and calls attention because it's a, it's a uniform. And it's supposed to be like standardized across people and having giant things on your ears isn't really standardized. So that summarizes my video talking about grooming standards. If you have any questions for me about grooming standards, please feel free to leave a comment down below. If you did like the tutorial about how I did my hair, please let me know and I can do more videos like that in the future. So thank you guys so much for watching and that is all folks. Until next time, toodles.